Hey, welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you stopping by and checking things out. Got the Radio Master here on the bench. I'm not going to do an unboxing or an unbagging. I'm not going to go into a whole tutorial of how to set everything up. I just wanted to kind of tell everybody how I'm working with, you know, what do I think about it after so many weeks of owning it and, and, and transferring all my models over and flying. You know, I've got like my Tadpole, I've got my 5-inch, I've got my other 5-inch, three of my 3-inch quads, my Moby Tooth, all of that uh, working on this. And as you know, if you follow my channel, you know, this was my my primary, you know, transmitter. This is what, what I, whatever I was flying, drone related, this is the transmitter I used. Uh, now, if you noticed, I said used and was. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with that far sky. So that's, uh, that's going to end up going into a ready to, ready to fly kit maybe for somebody someday. So I just wanted to real quick go through some of the things that I found that were geeky fun and interesting, um, compared to that radio and, uh, some things that I didn't like. So we'll just kind of real quick go through this. So the first thing that I thought was kind of interesting is, is you hear that? I'm not squeezing on that too hard. That's actually where the two plastic pieces of the back meet. Um, it's just where they, they're not flat all the way and one rubs across the other and they make a little popping in between here. <sighs> So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing was the Santana is like super loose. It doesn't fall down on its own, but it's uh, really loose. So if you just kind of barely touch it, 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 it'll move it out of position. So I'm not a, I'm not a super fan of that. It's kind of wiggly. Um, now you would think like, oh man, after a week's owning this thing, why don't you have Crossfire on all your stuff? Well, number one, I can't afford it, but I do have the Crossfire uh, bundle that came with the Micro TX uh, and the uh, Nanos. So I'm gonna put the Micro and Nano stuff eventually on. But for now, I'm just running the stock multi-protocol and, and things have been going really well for me. I've enjoyed the, the range. I believe that this transmitter is, is pushing further out than my QX7 did uh, with the same receivers and quadcopters. So obviously this radio is putting out a little bit more um, so I do get more range out of this um, the other thing the gimbal I, I have almost maxed out the gimbal if I loosen the screw in the in the back here this just really gets floppy so I, I do like it a little bit tight I took away the notchiness because I don't like the feeling of the notchiness I like it smooth and I just found that this all the way on the max setting, I've even removed some of the uh, lubrication that they put in there just to get it to grip a little bit more. I'm sure after it breaks in more and more, it'll, you know, it'll kind of be tight, you know, tighter as time goes on. So we'll see. But for now, it's tight enough and, and I'm okay with that. The other thing was, is these sticks are really high. If you watch uh, one of my videos on, on the channel, it's just FPV video all by itself. And that's my five incher that I'm flying. And what I noticed is, is my, my thumbs are not real long. They're wide, but not, not real long. And when I was pushing into certain maneuvers, the tendon in my thumb would pop. So like, instead of a nice smooth movement, I would kind of get a little, a little jerk. And <laughs> it, so it takes some getting the used to, but the sticks are just too long and you couldn't shorten them down any further. Uh, instead of buying new ones, I just took a drill and drilled these out a little bit further so they would sink all the way down. So they feel like they're okay. I may end up going with a little bit shorter, um, but you can see the length on that stick is, is pretty... I mean, you could pinch that real easy right now. I did notice also it feels like the throw from here to here is, is, fur is further or because they're not sunk down, like on the Q, if you notice on the QX7, they're sunk 
these are hall gimbals in here, and they're sunk down quite a ways. And then the, the body of the, the frame, you know, sticks up pretty high. On this one, the body of the frame is right there. Right at, I mean, it's almost flush. I'm going to say there's probably a four millimeter rise between the, the face of the M3, uh, the uh, hall gimbal and the face of the unit. So when you're holding it like this, doing a thumb action, you're actually up out of the, you can see where my thumb is, okay? And then here, you can see where my thumb is, kind of. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but the throw was easier with the QX7. Okay, I didn't have to move my hand. I feel like with this, I have to kind of move my hand a little bit. I have to, you know, to get this. You see how like over here, my hand has to move to get that. So I do feel like I'm using this neck strap a little bit more than I did with the QX7. So I'm not sure if it's just a matter of dropping these sticks further down than what they are, you know, getting new ones. So I'm going to play with that a little bit more. So that's just something I thought I'd mention to you that is, is definitely a challenge for me to when I'm flying really fast or, or hard. Because I think it was like my fifth time flying at, at all anything. I think it was like the third time I flew the 5-incher with this transmitter. Good grief. Um, and then I put that video out. But I thought, you know what? That video is so raw. You know? It, it is what it is. You smacking into stuff and, and just getting out of there and, and flying and having fun. When you when you were done with that pack, you're laughing and your hands shaking. And, you know, I was like, I'm posting it. I ain't editing. I'm not going to edit any of that out of there. So, but... The other thing is the switches here on the front, I can fit my finger between here, but my knuckle tends to want to flip that up. So I'm trying to learn how to fly with my finger above it instead of below it. Because usually I'd, I'd arm it like that, okay? And then I'd come down and I, I noticed when I put my finger back in here, I would flip it into the beeper. So that's something that I need to get used to. I just feel like these two switches are seem awfully close to each other. So I don't know if anybody else, if, if that's something you've noticed. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn it on and see what, see what kind of geeky, fun stuff I've done. Hey, props off. What are you going to fly now? Yeah. Switch warning. Oh, man. All right. So we got our splash screen going. Um, we got the voiceover from the little wifey. And... What was that? You want to hear that one more time? Hey, props off. What are you going to fly now? <laughs> yeah, that's so geeky. I love it. Uh, got the tadpole, a little photograph of the tadpole um, on here. You know, so that's kind of cool, especially when you have... Now, you see that screen turned off? And that's that's great, right? So, you know, you turn your transmitter on, your arm, you're going to fly. You don't want your screen on full blast. So I've got mine set for 10 seconds. Uh, but when you're doing stuff like this, it's annoying for it to go off. Or if you're trying to work on something, it's, it's annoying. So let's let's keep it on with a switch. I don't use this switch for anything um, in particular yet. So now the screen will stay on for us. If we don't want it on, we just flip that off. Now let's say we want the screen on and we're all set up. Everything's cool. We want the screen off, but let's say we want a little jam. So, I know it ain't, ain't the greatest, but there's, there's a few songs that I've meshed together, and now when I flip my transmitter, flip my switch up, I can, I can, I get to listen to the House of the Rising Sun and a little Metallica, and so that's really cool. Um, switch that off, we're, we're done unless I roll a key, and then we're on for 10 seconds. So that's kind of fun too. So I'm really liking some of the features in, in the radio um, as far as selecting models. You know, I've got all my models in here. I'm still working on getting photographs made up for them. Um, you know, you, you can go into each one of your things like this is my tadpole. And, you know, you can page all the way. And, and it's really interesting that this page back button, because I'm so used to holding down on the page button to go back. Um, even the QX7 and the 
T16. So pretty, pretty interesting. You know, it's, let's just say it's, it's, um, it's new to have this not work. Like you hold down on the page button, it doesn't take you back. It just pages you forward. So it's something to get used to. You can page back and forth. Um, and then return is there. I think on the T16, I think it was here. So that's kind of some things to play with. Uh, I don't own the T16, by the way. Everything you see on my channel is me helping somebody that owns the T16. So that's kind of some of the, the geeky fun stuff that I've been playing around with. And I, th I don't know. I just I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to go in here. Let me let me show you real quick how to get that switch because that is really annoying. And you, you don't want to have to go in the system every time. You know, if you go in the system and then you go in here to your global functions and this is how this is how I got that to work okay how oh, this <laughs> this fly is uh, making me crazy so on the C on the C switch so S C switch all right so it's just um, let me get back out of here so you click on that, you choose, you let it blink, and then you pick the spot where you want it. Okay, right here, that's where I want it to work. So then you go over to uh, this, you can choose backlight, okay? The simple, and then hit return. So anytime this switch is in that negative position, which is the middle, it will retain your backlight on. So you'll have your backlight on all the time. As soon as the 10 seconds goes by, then it will shut off. Okay, until you do something to activate that. Uh, my backlight does not activate with my controls. My backlight only activates with key. So I have to move one of these keys to make the, to the light come on. Or now I can flip this switch, okay, to the middle position. And then my music, so I don't want to play that too long because of copyright issues or whatever, but... Uh, my music, you just click on here and then wherever you want the switch, you put it in that position. And then BG Music, uh, that's just the file I chose to put it in and then I named it R-Tune. So Radio Tunes. So there is a, there's a lot that goes into making this happen that I'm not going to get into in this video. Uh, but you have to download uh, software, you have to pull the music into the file, edit. It's quite a process. Um, to get that file to work in this radio but it's pretty cool because after you play one song um then it goes in like i have metallica sanitarium is, is the next song so it's kind of fun but that's how you get your backlight done in the global functions in the and hold that down go page over to global functions okay so return but honestly for the money for for the features, for the software that you can use, and, and you know, big thumbs up to, to all the people involved in making this software work for me. I appreciate you and what you do uh, because this is open. It didn't cost me a thing to download all this software and get this thing to function the way it is. So definitely want to give thumbs up to all the people involved in the programming and, and all that. So I would say, yeah, I, I recommend it for the money. Um, at this point, I'm, I'm excited about seeing what Crossfire has to offer. Uh, I have yet to do anything uh, personally with Crossfire uh, on my equipment. I have set it up for other people. And, and, you know, of course, they can fly really far away. But, you know, not too far away. So not to make this video too long. I, I was trying to make like a quick five-minute video. I don't think I could possibly make a five-minute video. Is it even possible for me to do a five minute video? There's just so much to talk about. There's little tidbits of information just floating along and you know, you try to get it all in and next thing you know, I look down and it's 14 after 14 minutes. So, hey, if this was helpful, fun, interesting, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hated it, man, you give me a thumbs down, it all works.